Uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about caulking and, and different caulks that we use. Uh, I can tell you that uh, there are certainly different caulks for different applications uh, in the radon uh, mitigation uh, field. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the, uh, the caulk guns. This is a standard pump type caulk gun that we're all familiar with. This just happens to be the brand that works the best for us. We've, we've done a lot of caulking and just happen to like this particular model. But I also want everyone to understand that the amount of caulking you do in the radon industry is, uh, is kind of incredible and we wouldn't, we wouldn't be without an automatic caulk gun. This happens to be the brand that we like the most. Uh, we've tried every brand of caulk gun in the world. It's battery powered. Um, once, your, uh, once your team members get used to using it, uh, they can do a very neat job much faster than a hand caulk gun with no fatigue and no chance of a carpal tunnel type thing. Uh, I, I think that uh, anyone that ever tries one of these uh, definitely is a believer. And so two types of caulking uh, devices and so now let's start by talking about caulking uh, basement floors. Uh, it's uh, very important to caulk a basement floor, first of all, it's required by state law and for a very good reason. We've done some studies on the importance of caulking uh, basement floors and quite frankly, the studies have shocked us. Uh, and so uh, it, it can have a lot to do with success and failure of a radon system and extremely important in the, uh, in the success in terms of lowering numbers. Uh, much more, as I said, than we even believed. Uh, there's two types of, of caulk for basement floors. Uh, this happens to be a polyurethane, highly recommended concrete caulk. Uh, there are other caulks besides polyurethanes, but just make real, sh uh, uh, real sure that the caulk you're using is recommended for concrete floors. It needs to be durable. It needs to have a, a good adhesive quality. It needs to have a good expansion quality. And so this is, happens to be the one we use. It is a polyurethane concrete caulk. It's color coded. Uh, and we also use the same version of concrete caulk that's in a self-leveling or a thinner, uh, uh, a thinner uh, uh, mix. The self-leveling comes in real handy for the thin saw cuts in the newer construction. It comes in real handy for the smaller uh, uh, natural cracks. Uh, but both of these are very valuable for concrete floors and very important. So then we would go to maybe a silicone. Uh, this is just a standard silicone caulk. We like to use 100% silicone. And silicone is not considered a permanent caulk as polyurethane is considered a permanent caulk. So there's applications where you don't want a permanent caulk and applications where silicone just works and looks better. A good example is a sump lid. In other words, we're going to seal every sump lid down with silicone caulk as well as screws or whatever. But a sump lid, as we all know, has to occasionally be uh, uh, removed for uh, sump failure or maintenance. So you s definitely don't want a permanent caulk. That's where silicone comes in handy. So another caulk that we use in uh, crawl spaces especially is a butyl gutter caulk. Um, the manufacturers of the uh, radon retarder product for crawl spaces uh, recommend butyl caulk to adhere it to the wall. And if you've ever worked with butyl gutter caulk, you'll find out why because it's very sticky, does a great job of radon barrier products adhering to concrete walls. Uh, another product that gets specced by architects is a, um, a fire seal. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, mun municipalities and a lot of different specs require fire collars. Some of them uh, also talk about fire caulk. They can be used in conjunction with each other, but it's a nice to have a uh, fire caulk with you. Whether you're using a fire collar or not, it's still handy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the application, uh, and I'm going to uh, uh, show you some of our team members doing the actual caulking process, and you'll get to see a lot of, uh, of the automatic caulk gun and how valuable it is. And what Nick's trying to do now is, um, is clean out the joints that are uh, uh, we, our saw cuts for expansion joints. So uh, most every modern home has uh, saw cuts, but it uh, doesn't take long for them to get filled with uh, 
uh, debris and dirt, but and so it has to be cleaned out in order for caulk to have a place to go. And so Nick runs along with this roller skate. It's actually a mason's tool that at least used to be used a lot for cleaning joints between bricks. So you can buy these things at any uh, contractor that has a that has a, a mason equipment. So he's going to clean this joint now just simply by sweeping, and then he's ready to put his uh, uh, self. Uh, self-leveling caulk in this uh, in this saw cut and as we know almost all construction now has uh, <coughs> now has uh, these type of joints available so uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this roller skate is also good for other floor cracks uh, to clean the dirt out of them another important thing to caulk is the wall floor joint we call it uh, always some shrinkage whenever you pour concrete when the uh, when the water evaporates from it, you're going to have some shrinkage. Uh, this one looks like a pretty tight one, but that doesn't mean there isn't some shrinkage. Uh, a lot of regulated states, Illinois included, requires that this joint be caulked. Uh, we go to, uh, to the extreme of moving, uh, moving uh, a lot of stuff in order to caulk this joint. We feel it's a very important uh, uh, for the finished product uh, to have this joint caulked and once again you can see how efficient it is to use the uh, automatic caulk gun to do that and Nick's actually going to work that joint in uh, uh, as you can see once again. It's important to seal these cracks it is code in, uh, in many uh, regulated states and so uh, we work uh, we, we work, uh, work on these cracks and make it a priority to, do, uh, to doing a radon system. And uh, uh, the putty knife works well. Uh, it's, uh, I think the more you do this, the better you get at it. And uh, as you can see, Nick's got it down to a science here. One thing to remember about the polyurethane caulks is they take about 24 hours to dry. So we always uh, 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 warn the consumer, if we don't see the consumer, we leave a written note. Uh, don't, don't walk on the polyurethane. Don't let your pets walk on the polyurethane for 24 hours because uh, the last thing you want is polyurethane caulk to get on carpet. So it's important, uh, we have it in our literature uh, that we leave with the consumer and we also try to verbally tell the consumer to keep themselves and their pets off of it for 24 hours.